Father, we're grateful for your love and your watch care over Tim as he's been through the chemotherapy and the radiation, and we're grateful to have him back in the pulpit today, and we pray that you will bless him. We pray that you bless us, draw us close to you, prepare us for the day when Jesus will come again. So we ask these blessings and favors in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Hello. Hello. Okay. Hi, everybody. Hello. So great to be back. Amen. Tell you what, it's been hard not being around you, and I'll, I really appreciate and thank you. And praise God, I'm asking to bless each and every one of you for all the prayers that you've given me. Um, the message today is a message that I believe is one of the most important messages on our time to understand. And the reason I do is because it hasn't happened to us yet, and it may not happen to us, but it will happen down the line to someone of our loved ones in our bloodline, okay? And it's very important, I believe, that we understand this message. So go with me, if you will, to in your Bible, the book of Revelation, go with me to chapter 13. Today we're going to find out who the beast of the sea is. We're going to find out who the beast of the earth is. We're going to find out what the image that the beast of the earth makes of the beast of the sea. We're going to find out the mark of the beast. I'm going to find out the number of his name. All right? All that we can get through with chapter 13 of Revelation. So, as we look here, John is in a vision on the Lord's Day, and he sees several things. But in chapter 13, he says, Then I stood on the sand of the sea, and I saw a beast rising up out of the sea, having seven heads and ten horns, and on his head, his head, uh, ten horns, and on his his horns were crowns, ten crowns, and on his heads a blasphemy name. We're gonna put, we're gonna stop right there. We're gonna let, um, we're gonna look at this. So I stood on the sands of the sea, and I saw a beast rising out of the sea. So anyone know what the sea is in Bible prophecy? And we need to understand this is not literal language. John is writing this symbolism. Because John is in prison, and he's in prison on a Greek island uh, that is controlled by Rome. Okay, so everything that he wrote, he needed to write in code so that it could get out to the churches. If the Roman soldiers would read things like this, or the empire, they would have torn it up. So the symbol symbolism is to be shown to us through the one and only the Holy Spirit. Okay, as we see. As we are baptized, as we continue to grow, we are blessed with the Holy Spirit to show us these things. All right? So, let's, let's flip over to uh, chapter 17 real quick. Okay? And let's go to verse 12. The ten horns which you saw are ten kings who had received no kingdom as of yet, but they will receive the authority for one hour as, the kings of, as with the kings of the beast, or the kings of the beast. These are of one mind, and they will give their power and authority to the beast. These will make war with the lamb, and the lamb will overcome them. And, the Lord, and he is the Lord of lords and king of kings, and those who are with him are called chosen and faithful. Then he said to me, the waters, this is the seas, the waters which you saw where the harlot sits are many, many what? Peoples, multitudes, nations, and tongues. So let's turn back to 13. So John's seeing a beast power that is rising up out of a sea of people. Let's take a look back at his time, back at the time of Christ, or right after Christ, about 90 years or, what, 70 years right after Christ, had died uh, and was in, ascended into heaven. John is... Uh, I gave it away earlier. John is uh, seeing a, a, a 
beast power, he's describing this beast power as the sea because it's in a sea of multitude of people. Now, where would that have been found at that time? Well, I'm going to tell you, it was Rome. All roads at that time led to Rome. Rome was the world power, okay? They controlled all of Europe. They controlled Europe, Europe Asia, uh, Asia Minor. They controlled Northern Africa. They were the kingdom. So John is describing a sea of people that this beast road is represented, of, which is none other than the Roman Empire. Okay, so now the beast which you saw was like a leopard. His feet were like the lion, or like, was like a feet of the bear, and his mouth was like a lion. The dragon gave him his power, his throne, and his great authority. Now in verse two, I'll tell you that we have a leopard, we have a bear, and we have a lion, a mouth. If we go over to Daniel 7, we'll find out exactly what these are. Daniel chapter seven, and in Daniel chapter 7, let's just go right down to it. Let's go to verse 6. After this I looked, and there was another, like a leopard. All right, we don't want to go there yet. I'm going to go to verse 4. The first was like a lion that had eagle's wings. I watched till the wings were plucked off, and it was lifted up from the earth and made to stand on two feet like a man. And a man's heart was given to it. And suddenly another beast, a second beast, like a bear. It was raised up on one side and had three ribs in its mouth between its teeth. And they said thus to it, Arise, devour much flesh. After this I looked and there was like another, like a, like a leopard, which had on its back four wings of a bird. The beast also had four heads and dominion was given over to it. After this I saw in the night vision, and behold, a fourth beast, dreadful and terrible, exceedingly, st exceedingly strong. It had huge iron teeth, and it was devouring, breaking into pieces, and trampling the residue with its feet. It was different from all the beasts that were before it, and it had ten horns. Now, if we look, Daniel saw the first beast was the lion, the second beast was the bear, the second beast, the third beast was the leopard, and then the amalgamation you know, of the fourth beast he saw was an iron beast with teeth and horns on its head, seven heads, okay? If we look at John's teaching, he sees the sea beast first, and it is, then you see the leopard, you see the lion and the bear, he's looking backwards, Daniel was looking forward, so we see him in reverse order, and, the, and John has seen an amalgamation of these four beasts together, which creates this nasty beast. And as we see, the uh, lion, if you know the chain of prophecy, represents what? Babylon. And if we know who took overthrew Babylon? Medo-Persia. And who, was over, who overthrew Medo-Persia? None other than Greece. Now Greece, Overthrew, overthrown by the Roman Empire. So the Roman Empire is a beast that comes up out of the sea. Okay? Now it says the dragon gave his power to that beast. What? Dragon? What's this mean, John? Let's check this out. Let's go over to ver or, uh, chapter 12 and let's see what the dragon is. Uh, let's look at verse 3 in chapter 12 of Revelation. And another sign appeared in heaven. Behold, a great fire, a red dragon. Having seven heads and ten horns, uh, and seven diadems on his crown, on his heads. Those are crowns. Diadems are on his crown, are crowns. His tail drew a third of the stars of heaven. Well, where do we hear that before? Where do we know that from? The tail, tails are lines, okay? So it must have had something that drew a third of the stars. Stars are usually in prophecy angels or messengers, okay? So his tail drew a third of the stars of heaven and threw them to the earth, and the dragon stood before the woman. So what we have here, the power of the dragon, Satan, he's giving his power to this beast power that rose up out of the sea. This beast power has seven heads, and a head in prophecy represents a mountain or hills. And if we know it's Rome, well, what, does anyone know the nickname of Rome? The city of seven hills. 
So the seven heads represent the city of seven hills. And in that city, um, we have a smaller city. We have the Vatican City. And the Vatican City is none other than a country also, which combines its church and its state. The Pope has power to go to any type of any type of civil uh, meetings with, uh, with um, the League of Nations or what, um, what's the, the thing they call the, the United, United Nations. Nations and things like that. The Pope has the right to go there and try to influence his agenda, which he's been doing for quite a while, okay? And uh, we're gonna see that probably come around the corner. And uh, so let's move on here. And I saw as one of the heads had been mortally wounded in his head, uh, and his deadly wound was healed, and the world marveled and followed the beast. So they worshiped the dragon who gave authority to the beast, and they worshiped the beast, saying, Who is like the beast? Who is able to make war with him? And he was given a mouth speaking blasphemy things, great things, blasphemies, and was given authority to continue for 42 months. Now, 42 months is three and a half years, okay? That's 1260 days, and Bible prophecy a day is equal to a year. So we have a beast power that rises out of the sea now. He's got seven heads, he's got ten horns, and the horns have crowns, okay? These are the ten nations that are under the Roman Empire throughout uh, northern um, Africa, throughout all of Europe, and east of there. These are kingdoms that are ruled by the Roman Empire, okay? The beast, to be able to get his power from the dragon, needed some help from the dragon. And the dragon had, being the Roman Empire, the combination of civil government, the dragon power helped the beast by knocking out three of these nations. They were um, alien, or Aryan nations that believed Jesus was a created being instead of uh, an everlasting being of God, okay, being God. So once they were removed, especially the Ostrogoths, because the Ostrogoths, they had to be removed because they dwelled in the land of where the Vatican City is. So once they were removed, we see that the Pope was able to come into power. This system, this beast of a system was able to come in, called the papacy, was able to come into power in 538 A.D., and it rained for 42 months, which we broke down in prophecy in 1260 years. Is everyone following? Am I losing anyone? Okay, which would bring us to uh, 1798. Okay, so it was granted to him to make war with the saints and overcome them. As we know, throughout that period, all the Christians that were true Christians were tormented, tortured, and killed, and bad things happened to them. A lot of them, you know, fled away. A lot of them fled, and we'll get to that. And uh, it was granted, and the authority was given to him over every tribe, tongue, nation, and nation, okay? All who dwell on the earth will worship him, whose names have not been written in the book of life of the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. If anyone has an ear, let him hear. He who leads into captivity shall go into captivity. He who kills with the sword must be killed with the sword. Here is the patience of the faith of the saints. Now, we have in this verse, verse 10, he who leads into captivity shall go into captivity. Okay, the papacy had the civil government of Rome lead their captivity, okay? They lead to put, make people captive. They use the civil power of Rome, which we can relate to, relate to the sword. He used the sword power of the, of the Roman Empire to overthrow the Christians. He either followed the Pope's rule, the doctrines that the Catholic Church had put out, the papacy had put out, or you shall be killed, okay? And he used the civil power of Rome to do that. So when we get to verse 11, John sees, Then I saw another beast coming up out of the earth, and he had two horns like a lamb and spoke like a dragon. He exercises all the authority of the first beast. So we've got a second beast here. Coming up out of the earth. Now in Bible prophecy, we know that a lot of, if we look back at Genesis, the when the earth was formed, it was full of what? Void, right? Empty. 
So when John writes from the earth, it's a, it's a place that rises up out of the earth where there aren't a lot of sea of people. It would be the exact opposite, okay? So the first beast in his presence and causes the earth to dwell, and he who dwell on the earth to worship the first beast whose deadly wound was healed. Okay, so what country would you say, because we're the kingdom, the kingdom is the beast of the kingdom, and the power, the, we've got the power, what place would you say was just starting out in 1798 when the beast power received its mortal wound. And I want you to understand, when the papacy was taken out of power, about 50 to 60 years before that, the shifting of the, the countries that it ruled or were in its empire started becoming very atheist. And Napoleon became very powerful and he wanted no Christianity in his kingdom. And he was tired of the Pope and the papacy of forcing Christianity upon people. So he literally sent his top general, Berthier, to Vatican City. And I don't know if it was in the Sistine Chapel or where it was, but he walked in, General Berthier of France, under the direction of Napoleon. He walked in to, we'll say, the Sistine Chapel, and he took the Pope and he arrested him, and he took him back. So he used the power of the sword, the boy you did. So the, 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 the power of the sword that was used, it says that they must go and be, in, in, and the power of the sword will take them out. All right? He who leads into captivity shall go into captivity. He who kills with the sword must be killed with the sword. So, we see that the power, the civil power of uh, France sent Berthier to Rome to take the Pope. He went back to, back to uh, France in 1798 and he died. And we have to understand that the Catholic Church did not die. They still went on having their mass. They still went on having their weddings, their baptisms, their confirmation, and all the things that they do. Okay, so we need to understand that. It's just that the papacy had no control anymore to use the civil government of Rome. And we look at the new beast, the second beast rising out of the earth, getting back to that. This beast rose out of the earth in 1798, right around there. Now who could that be that only had a small little bit of, little bit of people? It wasn't a multitude, a sea of multitude of people. Well, it was none other than the United States of America. During the uh, 1700s, 1600s, we had a flood of people that escaped religious persecution from Europe and came to the United States because they wanted freedom to worship. So we rebelled against a nation, England, and we fought for our independence. So in 1776, we declared our independence, and we fought for that and won. In 1783, we signed a peace treaty with, with uh, England but still, none of the rest of the world took us seriously. 1791, we adapted, uh, what would we adapt our, our uh, Bill, of, Bill of Rights? Yeah, 1789, a new constitution was adopted. And in 1791, the Bill of Rights, which uh, gave everybody an L of rights, um, was adopted. And we had our first president, President George Washington that lived and or was in, in power with the United States, who was president until 1796, I believe, and got our second president come John Adams. And uh, so we're looking at 1798. America's got legs. It can walk. The rest of the world is now recognizing America as a great power, as a great nation to trade with, that is free from the tyranny of England, and on its own. So, in this, in this uh, second beast power that rises out of the earth, it says that I saw another beast coming up out of the earth, and he had two horns, like a lamb. Who do we know it's a lamb? Jesus. Jesus, okay. 
So this nation had a Jesus-like look, but it spoke like a dragon. Who's a dragon? The devil, right? Let's go to the horns. We have two horns, like a lamb. What do horns represent in this prophecy that John just said? Powers, kingdoms. Well, one of the things is you look at that lamb, those two horns are separated. So we have a nation that took church and state and separated it. We have a republic that held strong to protect the people, for the people, by the people, of the people. But yet it gave its people the right to religious freedom that they never had, never experienced. So these two horns represent the two separated entities of the United States, the civil government and the state, or the church. And when a, a country, when it speaks like a lion, or the beast speaks like a lion, how does a country speak? Through its laws, right? So this is very important to understand that the United States being the second beast to rise up as we go forward, and he exercises, he, who's he? The second beast, verse 12, and he exercises all the authority of the first beast in his presence and causes the earth and those who dwell, who are the ones who dwell on the earth? It's us in America. And those are the ones that dwell on the earth worship the beast whose deadly wound would be healed. Now this is not only America, this is going to go worldwide, okay? He performs great signs that he makes fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men. Sound like anything we know? What makes fire come down from heaven in the sight of men? United States doing this? How about missiles? Could be, we don't know. Doesn't say exactly, but the power of the United States to make fire come down from heaven. This is the second second beast doing this. And he deceives those who dwell on the earth. Those are his people, are the people of the earth, of the United States. He's a, we're going to be deceived, the United States, who dwell on the earth by the signs and sight of the beast, telling those who dwell on the earth to make an image to the beast who was wounded by the sword, to make that image. Does anyone have any idea what that image might be? We know that first beast is a power that controls civil and it controls religious. And it's put together. Now, as we move forward, the United States, the first beast, is told to make that image to the first, or the second beast is told to make that image to the first beast. And we're seeing it right now. People are pushing so hard. They're so hard for to repeat history. We had the Sunday laws, uh, the blue laws, and they're pushing so hard. Even the Pope's right wrote an encyclical about how we need to make Sunday holy, how we need to keep Sunday, make it the one day of worship, how we need to get back to God and give the earth a day of rest. We're seeing this. But there's only one God and there's only one word, and that word says the seventh day is the day I blessed and the day I made holy and the day for us to all to keep. That's what the Lord said. The fourth day is the Sabbath of the Lord. He gave it to us. All men. Jesus said, I am Lord of the Sabbath was made for man, not man for the Sabbath. Mm -hmm. I am Lord of the Sabbath, mm -hmm. the seventh day. So, we could see that the second beast power is going to try to inflict or enforce these laws to make us follow what the papacy says, what the first beast says. And that could be to end up worshiping on a Sunday. And the main thing is not that worshiping on a Sunday is all that bad. You're actually supposed to be working that day. But it's gonna, they're going to find a way to keep Sabbath keepers from keeping the Sabbath. And like I said, it hasn't happened yet. We don't know when it's going to happen. But Jesus said to watch, watch, watch all of this. Keep your nose in this book. And keep your heart with him. Okay, as we move forward, let's read uh, 
Let's read the last or verse 15. He was granted power to give breath. What's breath? Life. Breath is life. And who's he? The second beast. He was given power to give breath to the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak and cause as many as would not worship the image of the beast to be killed. He causes all of those small, great, rich, poor, free, and slave to receive the mark of the right hand, on their right hand, or on their foreheads. So, we've got this image made to the beast to worship the first beast. The second beast is saying to worship the first beast and then making laws and rules and, and uh, was granted the power from the first beast to do these things. So we've got America making laws and rules for the rest of the world to worship what the papacy says. And like I said, we don't know exactly what it's going to be, but we got, got a, a little bit of a hint, okay? So, anybody who doesn't follow this beast power and this, these laws, what's it say here? Be killed. Be killed. So, if we're not going to follow this beast power, we have to understand that our strength with the Lord, it's going to be crazy for Sabbath keepers. For us to keep the Sabbath and to follow the testimony of Christ and the Ten Commandments that we are told by God to keep, it's going to be tough. You're going to see those footprints in the sand and you're only going to see one set of them because Jesus is going to have to be carrying us. Because our faith in Christ is going to be very strong mm -hmm. and has to be very strong. But we must know that Jesus will never leave us. Amen. Okay? Amen. Through these tribulations and these trials that we're going to go through, are you willing to lose your life? Are you willing to lay your life down? Not for self, but for the Lord Jesus Christ. Because that's what he's asking. That's what he's showing. Who will you worship? This mark on the beast, the forehead or the hand, people think it's a barcode. They think it's the COVID vaccine. They think all this, that. They speculate. I feel like Mike's t-shirt. I never said that. Okay? You must understand that this mark is not a visible mark. It's a mark like when you're hunting a man or hunting something. And they say, that's a marked man. It's not visible. You will not see it. But you will accept it if you're strong in Sunday worship and you're strong to obey what God's telling you not to obey. Right on your forehead. Now there's going to be a lot of people that are going to say, oh heck, I'll go along with it. I want to be able to buy and sell. Right there. On the right hand. Okay? But if you're a Sabbath keeper, and you're obeying the Ten Commandments the testimony of Jesus Christ, you're going to have a shh right there. God is going to have his angels put his mark on your forehead. So that when the time of trouble comes, you will be marked for safety. The angels will be able to see God's mark and leave you alone. But if you took the shh, mark of the beast, those seven nasty plagues, after Jesus walks out of that sanctuary in heaven and says, it is finished, and he puts on his kingly garment and he's coming to get us, there will be no turning back. Because when that day ends, no prayers shall be heard, and Jesus will declare, He who is filthy, stay filthy. He who is holy, stay holy. No switching teams. So you need to recognize what's coming. And it could happen in our day. But if it doesn't, your kinfolk down the line need to understand what is coming. Let's read on. And that no one may buy or sell except for one who has the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. 
Here is wisdom. Let he who understands calculate the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man, his number is 666. Now, what day was man created? The sixth day, right? And this is a man that we can recognize that carries the number of 666. And 666, you got Satan, you got the Antichrist, you got the false prophet. Satan controlling the Antichrist, false prophet, man. You've got the number of man three times. Satan's trinity. 777 is our Lord's trinity. Amen. Father God, Son Jesus Christ, and the blessed Holy Spirit, 777, a number of completion. Oh man, I'm getting chills. That's it, that excites me. So, when we look at the number of his name, the Pope, throughout the generations, has always worn a big hat. Has anyone seen that big hat? Big hat? Okay, and on that hat was always written a phrase, Vicarious filet de I. Okay, so now we've got to get back to the wisdom here. What's it say? Read it to me, somebody. What? Here's wisdom, let him who has understanding cal calculate the number of the beast. Of his, of the, the number of a man, his number is 666. So, the phrase on that hat says Macarius filleted the lead. The eye. Not Italian. Well, I am Italian, but I don't speak the language. <laughs> Forgive me. <laughs> uh, anyway, Rome being the center of the earth, we have to calculate these with their system of counting, which were known Roman numerals. Okay. So, he who has wisdom, let him calculate the name. Uh, Vicarious starts with a B, the B equals, I, B equals 5, I is next, I is a 1, C is next, C represents in Roman numerals 100, A and the R don't represent any amount, the I represents another 1, the U represents in vowel form the V, which is a, a, the uh, numeral 5 again, okay? So we add that up, we get 112. Then we go to Philae. We've got F, nothing, I, that's one, and then we got an L. Anyone know what an L is in Roman numeral? 50, okay? And then we got an I and an I, that's two more. So we get 53. Then we go to the I, D-E-I, what's a D represent? How much in Roman numeral is a D? 500, okay? Then we've got the E, that means nothing, then we've got the I, which equals one. Everybody following me? Mm -hmm. Add that up, we get 501. So when we take the carries 112, and we take the lead 53, and we take the I 501, that equals 666. Six, six. Can it be any more obvious? The Bible tells us so. Now, vicarious Christ means Son of God, represents Son of God on earth. The Pope, the papacy, took it upon themselves to claim to be the Son of God on earth. They said their ecclesiastical powers give them that right to forgive sin and do this and do that. But we know there's only one God, maker of heaven and earth, our creator, our redeemer, the man who gave us the plan of salvation. Amen. Follow along, understand, teach this. Don't be afraid to open this book and teach it because it seriously needs to be taught. Not just for our people in our time, mm -hmm. but the time of people that come down the road. They need to know and understand this because this time is going to happen. It's prophecy. All the prophecies of this book's come through. It's like the last one. It's going to happen. Let's pray. <laughs> Father in heaven, thank you so much for allowing me to deliver your word. And Lord, we just pray that everybody has clear and concise understanding. Please grant us your Holy Spirit to make discernment. 
when we go back and look at this, and just, just to understand the truth, your truth, anybody who might watch this and uh, hear it, Lord, we just ask that you open up their ears and knock the scales off their eyes, that they believe the truth and understand it, and Lord, we ask that you bless them, as we know this book says that you will. In Jesus' name we pray and give thanks. Amen. Amen.